Richard Vines. I'm the Chief Executive of Rare Cancers Australia. Personalised medicine was once described to me as that what we used to have is a very blurred picture of a patient. If you can imagine a photo that was very blurred. Diagnostic techniques and our ability to analyse tumours increase. What we're doing is adding pixels to it and the picture gets clearer and clearer of you as a patient and what will work for you. That goes right to the, the point of what drugs will work with you. All of drug development for the past 60 years has come through clinical trials. But until recently, most of those trials were based around populations that were defined by where the cancer started. It arises in the prostate, you have a trial for a prostate cancer, for example. And enormous progress has been achieved through clinical trials, even using those principles. But that's not really what makes a cancer tick. What makes a cancer tick is its molecular circuitry. And technology has now evolved to the point where we can analyze each person's tumor to work out what makes that cancer, that individual cancer tick. And so that allows the possibility of personalizing clinical trials so that rather than choosing people who have only prostate cancer and perhaps not breast cancer or bowel cancer or a rare cancer type to take part. Now we can say, let's take any patient with advanced cancer who has no other options, test their tumor for its molecular circuitry and then use that information regardless of where the cancer started to design an appropriate therapy. That's the basis of personalized medicine trials. Genetic testing in the context of personalised medicine trials uh, is how we uncover the molecular circuitry that's unique to each person's cancer. So what actually happens in practice is a piece of the tumour that's been used to make the diagnosis of cancer in, in each individual patient is usually stored in a pathology lab. Without needing to take a fresh biopsy, we can go to that what is called an archival sample, pull it out, and then extract uh, DNA and RNA, and then analyze that DNA and RNA to uncover the molecular circuitry of a tumor. And that process is called genomic or genetic testing of a tumor. So what this means is that using this genetic testing, we're able to uncover what's unique about your tumor and your tumor alone. So over the past 20 years, drug development has become increasingly rational. And what I mean by that is that we're beginning to understand how to develop molecules, drugs, and design them so they hit a particular target. That used to be the way that drugs were developed. They were extracted from the bark of trees, for example. They were put on cells, cancer cells, in a, in a Petri dish, and we saw whether they responded. And then we went out and treated thousands of cancer patients to work out who responded and who didn't. But we never really understood why. And we still don't know why many of our conventional, old-fashioned drugs work. In this new era, we know precisely what we're doing. The drugs are very precisely targeted to a particular aspect of the tumor's molecular circuitry. They're designed specifically to be able to lock onto a particular target within a tumor and to affect that target alone. So one of the theoretical benefits of targeted treatments using designer drugs is that they should be more selective in hitting the cancer cell because only the cancer cell has that target, whereas the normal cells don't. As we know with chemotherapies, or the old-fashioned chemotherapies, they can affect many uh, organs aside from the cancer, like the bone marrow and the gut, and that explains many of the side effects that we get with conventional therapies. With targeted therapies, although this is not always true, the side effect profiles tend to be better tolerated than perhaps some of our older-fashioned chemotherapies. Can come in any form. There are some types of designer drug that will come as an intravenous drug formulation, uh, what we call a formulation, and some of them will come as tablets. This is a field that's relatively young, the very cutting edge of science you might say, but the emerging evidence suggests that linking a person's cancer through understanding its molecular circuitry to the right drug personalizing treatment 
may offer up to a six-fold increased chance of response to a drug on a clinical trial. And while that data is emerging and a good deal more research is required to get precise numbers, I think most of us believe that personalised therapy is the way of the future. My advice to patients who are thinking about going on to a clinical trial is that when conventional treatment options run out, clinical trials represent, in my view, what should be the standard of care. I believe that the promise of new drugs being developed in this era of rationally developed designer therapies is no longer the lottery that perhaps clinical trials used to be when we didn't understand how drugs work. And I think it's very important that every patient who is fit and well enough to potentially benefit from taking part in a clinical trials tries to get onto them. But that's particularly true for rare and less common cancers because there simply aren't trials that are designed for rare subgroups of patients using the old classifications where the cancer started. Going on to trials of personalised therapy probably represents really the major opportunity going forward that science has affording, affording us. For trials like a personalised medicine trial, there's a lot of infrastructure that goes on behind the, the scenes. They're quite complicated. You have to have access to complex state-of-the-art technologies that allow you to analyse a patient's tumour, then interpret it, and then you have to have uh, experience with conducting uh, trials of often very new drugs. And as a general statement, those trials tend to be conducted in major cancer centres. No. So uh, I think as a matter of principle for anybody, any patient taking part in a clinical trial, because a patient, that trial is about an unproven therapy, that's the nature of a clinical trial, that we're trying to develop the evidence base for drug development that may benefit patients in the future, that contribution is what we should expect of patients. Patients should not be out of pocket for taking part in clinical trials.